Hello, everybody. Hi, and welcome. I'm back. Um, I started a series. Well, first of all, hi, I'm Charlie Reindress. I'm the author of this book about Stompin' Tom Connors called Stompin' Tom Connors, The Myth and the Man. Um, I, I started an interview. Well, let me back up a little. It's been a heck of a time getting here. Um, back last year, my publisher, Formac Publishing, got a grant from Arts Nova Scotia for me to tour Ontario and promote and promote the book. And then, of course, and I was supposed to hit the road. I think it was going to be I was going to be in Ontario in May and June. I was going to travel around with Duncan Fremlin. And then, of course, COVID hit, so everything got put on hold. And then, after a few months, we said, "Well, let's try something online." So I started a Facebook page called. Stompin' Tom Connors, The Myth and the Man, where I shared stories about Tom and I shared photos and all kinds of stuff. And uh, But I also did an interview series called Stompin' Tom Remembered. And we had done, I, was, I had planned for it to be a six part series. We'd done three. And then for some reason, Facebook, unpublished the page and they said that we violated community standards for spam and we have been, my publisher and I we've been reaching out to them for weeks to find out exactly what we did wrong so we could address the situation and they've yet to get a hold of us so here we are I'm just going to stream from my personal uh Charlie Reindress artist page I'm also streaming on YouTube tonight if you go to YouTube and look for Charlie Reindress it's there and uh, we also uh tonight's a special show um because Live Bait Theatre is sponsoring tonight's performance as part of their New Works Festival. And I see Ron Kelly Spurls, who invited me to do that, is uh, watching. And we've got Craig Galbraith watching. We've got, it looks like about 10 people have found us so far. So hopefully, if you guys see this and you want to share it, share widely all over uh, Facebook and we'll get a, <laughs> we'll hopefully get more people watching. I know it's a bit of a drag that we couldn't do it from the Stomp and Tom page because we had, I don't know, 1,400 followers and then we lost them. So anyway, um, we're back though. And I'm coming to you from my kitchen. We do this every Thursday night at eight o'clock Atlantic time because I'm coming to you from Amherst, Nova Scotia. And Tom used to say, "In case you were thought you were coming to see, in case you thought you were coming to see a concert tonight, you were wrong. You were coming to a party." And Duncan Fremlin, who was in his band and toured with him, said a show with Tom was like a show in his kitchen. The people in the audience were the guests at his house. So tonight, you're the guests at my house. Welcome to my kitchen in Amherst, Nova Scotia. If I were to move the uh, computer just a little bit, you'd see a big pile of dirty dishes just over there. But I've got them hidden for now because we literally just finished dinner. Anyway, when I when I wrote the book, the reason the book was called The Myth and the Man is because I, I came to discover that Stomp and Tom was a character um, and, and very different than Tom Connors, the man. So my interview series has been is about talking to people who worked with and knew Tom Connors, the man, as well as Stomp and Tom Connors, the uh, the artist, the country singer, the character that everybody came to know and love. Um, and hopefully we can shed a little light on the man who was Stomp and Tom. So tonight's guest is a man named Al Widmeyer. Al is a musician. Um, I knew he was a musician. Musician. I did not realize he was also a singer, but when I asked him to do the show, I talked to him and turns out he sings as well, but he plays every stringed instrument in the world and he'll show you some of those uh, when I bring him on here in a minute. But he, he toured with Tom and he recorded with Tom. He's actually on a couple of Tom's albums. And more importantly, he became friends with Tom. He actually spent Tom's last birthday with him at his house just a month before Tom passed away. And uh, Al was one of the people who was generous enough to grant me an interview for the book and he gave me some wonderful stories. And if you've read the book, all of Al's stories are in there, or a lot of the stories he told me, but I'm sure he's got more, which he'll share tonight. Um, but as well, um, I, 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 I could read from the book a lot, but I'd rather Al tell you the story, but I'm gonna read just a tiny little bit. Just, it's one of my favorite stories I, that uh, Al told me. And um, where are we here? The, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to find the, the chunk I was going to read to you. Anyway, um, Al toured with Tom and he talked, he told me a story that I hadn't heard a lot of this kind of story. I knew Tom was really committed to the fans, but this one kind of stood out for me. So, um, well, actually, we'll start with them driving on tour. Both Tom and Tom Jr. were notorious for driving fast. So Tom and his son Tom Jr. would be, they when they when they toured, they would travel as a little caravan and there'd be a series of cars and trucks and Tom and Tom Jr. would be in the lead. They were notorious for driving fast and Tom insisted the others keep up. Al Widmeyer explained, I really thought, I'm going to die in a wreck. I'm a professional driver, having been driving a, a city bus for 24 years. But the way these guys pass people on the road and stuff like that, I just thought, these guys are maniacs. They drive so fast, and then they'd stop and have a couple beers somewhere. You know, he'd stop and have lunch and have a couple of beers. Tom was well known for taking detours. 
He traveled the country countless times. So he'd get the band to pull into some little town he'd played years before to visit a bar he'd performed in or to drop by and say hi to an old friend. Widmeyer recalls stopping for breakfast in a place called Blind River in Ontario. When they entered the restaurant, there, were only, there was only one other patron, and he left before they finished eating. When Tom went to settle up his bill, he was told that the other patron had paid for their breakfast on his way out. Tom asked who he was and discovered that the man ran a little convenience store on a nearby First Nations reserve. Widmeyer said, We went about 15 miles out of, our, out of our way to find that man and thank him. Tom wanted to thank him in person. That's the kind of man he was. The look on that man's face when Stomp and Tom walked into his store was priceless. <laughs> anyway, I love that story. When Al told me, I was like, that one's going to be in the book. And indeed it was. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to, oh, so I want, Al's been a musician for years. And in addition to touring with Tom, he, he continues to play music and stuff. But he also um, was a member of the very famous Canadian bluegrass band, the Dixie Flyers, who actually recorded for Boot Records. So anyway, we'll talk more about Al when I bring him on. So here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Al Widmeyer. Al. Hey, how are you doing, Charlie? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Well, I'm doing good. And hello to everybody out there in TV land. There you go. Now, were you able to find the page and share it on your Facebook? Yes, I, I, I did. Yes, I did. Wonderful. Good. We were trying to sort that before we went on the air and I tried to do it. And I, anyway, I was running out of, I had that little 30 second countdown going and I was running out and I was, I got seven seconds left. And I, anyway, so I'm so, so great to have you here, Al. Um, I love that story you told because I knew Tom was, um, I'm going to go, we'll go back and talk about how you met him and all that. But I knew Tom was really committed to the fans, but I hadn't heard a lot of stories about him, like driving out of his way just to go see somebody and say, thank you. I love that story. Well, it was a complete surprise. Uh, we were heading on a West tour. We we're heading for, uh, uh, well, our first date was uh, in uh, Thunder Bay. Yeah. So we stayed in uh, uh, Sud uh, Sudbury one night and we, we head out and, and they said, what do you guys want to stop for something to eat? We said, yeah, okay. So we stopped like we stayed in Blind River and the rest is history. And, and uh, mm. I, I, that's the first time I, I seen someone do something like that. I mean, we, we had, we we're in a really big hurry to get where we were going, but yeah. still we're going to Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah. And, uh, oh yeah. He, he bought dinner and he said, he asked that we asked the waitress where he's from and told us and the rest is history. Wow, that's great. You actually told me that, I think it was that tour, you didn't have to be in Thunder Bay till Saturday, but you left on Sunday because Tom liked to take his time? No, we left on a, we left on a uh, Saturday. And I oh, okay. No, sorry. Yeah, we left on a Saturday and we uh, uh, got to uh, uh, Sudbury on Saturday, or Saturday night. No, no. Uh, yeah, Sud it was a Sudbury Saturday night. We <laughs> did, did he always play Sudbury on Saturday nights? I bet he tried. <laughs> uh, tried, yeah. Uh, we, I think the last time, yeah, the last time we played Sudbury was a. Uh, let's see here. I got all my sheets here because I got so I can remember dates. Uh, we were supposed to. Play, we played there. Well, it would be. Uh, yes, we played. No, we played a Sudbury Saturday night day off there. No, it was a Friday night. Oh. I bet it went until Saturday once yeah. you got back to the hotel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you told me, or sorry, you go ahead. Uh, yeah. So uh, we, he, he, when we were on that particular tour, after we, uh, he had something to eat and we had something to eat. He went, we went to the, uh, um, uh, the reserve and then we carried on to uh, uh, Sault Ste. Marie and oh, okay. we came to Sault Ste. Marie for the night. And uh, we were there for two days because Tom liked staying at this particular motel in Sault Ste. Marie because they used to cut the grass so you can play croquet. <laughs> you guys would have, the band would have these big croquet tournaments when you were on oh, tour, yeah, right? Yeah. And they'd last for hours, I was told. Oh, they last for hours. Is it? And then well, I remember being with the flashlights and, or, you know, cell phones. I remember Tim Hadley had his uh, cell phone out so we could see the ball, you know. And <laughs> Eaten alive, of course, it's the summertime. The bugs are out and you're getting eaten alive. Wow. I know Tom was, uh, everybody talks about how he could never be beaten at checker chessers, or at, sorry, checkers or chess. Was he as good at croquet? He was pretty darn good. Was he? Okay. <laughs> I've seen some pictures from that. Actually, um, so we're going to, now I'll go, I'm going to go backwards. And I just want to talk a little bit about like how you came to meet Tom. Because the first time you met him, it was through a friend in Kitchener before you ever played for him, right? Is that right? Yes. Uh, yeah. He he heard of me over the years. 
you know, playing with the Dixie Flyers and stuff. But it wasn't actually till 2005, and Darren Parise called me, and yeah. uh, he needed a ride. He, he his mother, he had to go see his. He had a personal thing he had to go to, so he called me. He said, "Would you mind hooking me up, or uh, would you mind uh, driving me up so I can hook up with the tour?" I said, "Well, by all means," but I said I'd really like to meet Tom. He says, "Yeah, we, I, I'll I'll see what I can do." So, okay. uh, anyways. Uh, it was in a hotel in Stratford, Ontario, and I lived in Kitchener, of course. And uh, so we pulled up in front of the, the Mot Hotel Motel. And see, Tom didn't like staying in, in fancy schmancy hotels. He liked the ones you can drive up and and get the stuff out of the car and into the room. Right. And was part of that so he could avoid fans in the lobby and stuff? Was that just so he got a little more privacy? Is that part of it? Yeah, or? He the lobbies and stuff like that. He just wanted to get out of his, out of his truck and go into his room, get his stuff out, and he has his truck backed up to the door, so he has all his stuff, because he used to carry tools, and of course, he had his stuff to make his tea in the morning, you know, and... and uh, oh, really? <laughs> so, and his croquet, it's that. <laughs> no, I think JR, no, no, the the the, uh, the, uh, um, the croquet was in the band, uh, in the band truck, the sound truck. Oh, okay, it was in the sound truck, that's funny. Yeah. With, okay. with coolers and beer and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so you you drove your friend because he he was playing with Tom, was he? he was playing with Tom, and I pulled up to to Darren's room, and Tom was sitting in the front chair, was sitting on a chair in the uh, in front of his motel, and uh, Darren went over and asked him if I could come over, you know, uh, meet him, and he said yeah, and I had my book with me, and so uh, I got him to sign my book, and then. We started talking, started talking about the boot record days and the Dixie Flyers. Yeah, I remember those guys, he said, the Dixie Flyers. And I said, you realize how many people I have played with who are on the boot records? I'll start out with like like with the Dixie Flyers. I played with John Hamm and I played with Paul Weaver and I played with Joe Firth, you know, toured with these guys. eh? Right. And, uh, so, but I said, you also knew a friend of my father-in-law's. And he, would, he, he, he said, well, who would that be? I said, well, Claire Adelum. He said, you knew Claire Adelum. I said, I certainly did so. My, my father-in-law used to record with, uh, it played with him, but used to record with Claire Adelum. And back in the 50s, my dad filled in playing accordion in his band in Claire Adelum. So, oh. so it was kind of a, a coincidence. And then uh, he said, next thing he says, you want a beer? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love a beer, you know? So anyways, uh, we, That's almost a, a Canadian heritage moment, Stompin' Tom saying, want a beer? <laughs> so, and, and I was told after, like, that didn't happen a lot. You know, a stranger come in and being offered mm -hmm. a beer to hang around. So anyway, we were telling stories, and I stayed there the most of the night. And, of course, I was smoking back then, and I had these, uh, I had these Churchill cigars. You know, they're eight big long ones, and they're about that big around. They're yeah. like big Cubans. And I'm smoking them, eh? and he's watching me smoke these cigars. He says, are you inhaling them? I says, yeah, well, why wouldn't I? Don't you inhale your cigarettes? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, was that, was that the night you also, also offered him some moonshine? Not that night. Okay. It was a different time. It was, it was, that, that was another time. I, I got some moonshine to him because the boys uh, snuck off one time. Uh, they were on tour in 2000 and this would be, the er like I wouldn't even say it was two thousand yeah two thousand a little over yeah and they came to Kitchener and yeah. uh, uh, Steve uh, Petrie uh, was playing in the band and Darren Prize and uh, they call uh, so I that was the times you go to the motel and uh, talk to the guys the other guys in the band and they said what are you doing we uh, we're just uh, hanging around what you you know he said would you mind if we came over I said well by all means come on over so they snuck away. That's basically what happened. These oh, okay. Yeah. Cause when you were on tour, you were, he had to know where you were at all he times. Had to go over there all yeah. the time. So he, they snuck away. The two guys snuck away for, Oh, I don't know. Maybe a couple of hours, maybe three hours. They brought a case of beer over my place. And we, Oh, I, basically what we did is sat around and picked nonstop for a couple of hours, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so and it, Steve says, and he said, well, you, we better get going here. Cause we're going to get in trouble. If he finds out we're gone. Right. And so anyways, I gave him, I said, here, take this with you. And I had a little bit of this moonshine that I got as I was at Bean Blossom, Indiana, uh, at a bluegrass festival. I got some of this 
that the, the pure stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, here, take a little a little jar of it here. Take that to Tom, and maybe we'll, we'll he'll uh, you know forgive you. <laughs> you know. So didn't hear nothing. Didn't hear nothing. The wife said, "Got a call." I was because I had to work the next day. Yeah. So I'm um, work, and then I get home. Uh, there's wife said there's that uh, Steve Petrie called or D Darren Parise, and uh, there's two tickets at the front desk for you to go see the show that night. So, wow. so the wife and I, we go and uh, it was dead. Like we we're about three or four rows back dead in front of Tom. It was yeah. the most eerie thing I've ever seen because I'm looking at up at him and every once in a while, he'd look to the side of it, like the moat, like the whole, like the microphone stand and kind of look up and look right at me. Right. I'm thinking yeah. he, he knows I'm sitting up there. For, I don't know what it is. Yeah. He told me later. He said sometimes he does that, but he he doesn't remember that. Don't remember that night. He remembers the night of the moonshine. He said he's had a lot better moonshine from the from the Maritimes than he had from the United States. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. The United States, uh, then then you know. Yeah, even even the, the when it, even the moonshine is better in Canada. He was he was Canadian through and through, right? Oh yeah. Well, I finally yeah. did get him a jar of moonshine for the band and everything. Uh, some some Mennonite uh, folks around Waterloo make it too. Oh, okay. A friend of mine got got a hold of some, and so we did have a jar on on. I don't remember that was. I think that was the West, maybe the West tour or the East. I remember. And did he like the Canadian moonshine better? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, they always said not as good as the uh, as the Maritimes. Oh, okay, that's funny. <laughs> so now you you play. I know you play dobro. You play fiddle. You play basically anything with strings, don't you? Oh, basically, yeah. When, yeah. when, when Tom hired me, though. And, That's what I was going to ask, yeah. When I met him in 2005, and after, he, you know, uh, talking about uh, playing, and I said, I'm driving bus, you know, now and stuff. And he goes, well, have you ever, have you ever thought about going back on the road? And I said, well, well maybe, uh, whatever. And, well, sure enough, I got a call the next, I got a call the next year to play Dobro and, and Steel, be the Dobro Steel mandolin guy your band oh, okay. guy and uh i said yep yeah, no problem so i'm working on this stuff and the next thing you know i got a call from him and he says my uh my singer can't make it and he yeah. said we've been hearing you we've been listening to your cd and he says uh would you like to open the shows well of course i'm gonna say i'd do anything to get myself in that band right of course yeah and uh so i said sure i'll, I'll open the shows for you and that's how that i that's the first tour that's what i did so you opened the show for him and played in his band when he came on. That's Correct. the idea? Oh, okay. Now, I, I loved your story about the night you went to see him. You were running late and you had a car full of instruments the first time you went to basically audition for him at his yeah. house. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us that story? I, oh, I well, yeah. Well, well, now it's time to go. And and he, uh, he said, come on out the house. I want to meet you. And, and of course, we've talked uh, the year before, but we never sat down and one-on-one -on -one type deal. And I said, yeah, come on out here about, uh, it's always a come on out after supper. So, okay, yeah. So um, I load up the car with everything. I, I got my dobro, I got band, I got every instrument in the house and my car. Yeah. And uh, so I get down, uh, and, and I'm lost. The next thing, I'm, I got lost. I, not lost, but I wasn't quite sure where I was. I ended up in Rockwood, you know, which was close. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm in a... I'm in a getting into a sweat here because I'm I'm a bus driver. I'm always on time. It doesn't matter, you know. You're always on time. So I run into the. I, I get there knocking. There's Lena. Come on in. Tom's waiting for you. Okay. So I go in there. I never met Lena before. That's first time I met Lena. And yeah. uh, come on in. Tom's in the bar. Okay. So you walked into his house. There was uh, on the right hand side. As you walk in is the kitchen. You keep on walking, and then there's this bar beautiful bar you know it's got a pool table and he's got a cd jukebox you know it's just beautiful right right so, yeah like my kind of place uh and so and i'm hyper i'm just like oh geez i'm, I'm running late and blah 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 and he says here al calm down get some beer okay. <laughs> so we had a beer and and uh then uh we had another you know and <laughs> so now i'm starting to loosen up and calming down a wee bit and i said well, I better go get my stuff out of the car and bring it in. Well, what stuff's that? Well, I said my guitars and, and all of it. No, 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 no. I, I know you can play. I, I just want to get to know you. 
Okay, well, that's <laughs> so the gig began. So uh, we're sitting there talking music, and you know, uh, he's telling me his story. I'm telling my story, and and uh, it was quite interesting. I, I, most interesting I, I can remember. So, oh, it got to be oh, around midnight or so, and I had about I was just really getting because I was watching how fast I was drinking. I said, Tom, I, I'm going to have to shut her down here because I got to drive home. Oh no, 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 no! There's a there's a room here for you down the hall. You you, <laughs> you can stay here, right? Oh, yeah. well, you know <laughs> what's going on? You know, I'm sure. Okay, so and then we're into it. Then we're into it, drinking. And of course, I didn't know about the. I kind of knew about the five o'clock in the morning. Uh, <laughs> you know? So I found out firsthand what uh, what the five o'clock in the morning deal is because it was how oh, was well I went down about five or five thirty and it was day daylight you know and he's still sitting at the bar playing his because we're by that time we got the guitars out and we we're having a little jam. Wow. And, uh, uh, um, the man knew the man knew vintage country songs like. And word for word, I, I just, I, 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 the man was an encyclopedia of country music that he knew all the words, all the thousands of songs. I know. Have a song and he knew all the words to it. So, so anyways, I go to my room. Oh, about an hour later, I got to get up and I got to, I got to have a pee, right? So I got up and have a pee and mm. he's still sitting at the bar, you know, with the guitar and, and uh, I, I go get a glass of water and, and uh, I go back and lay down, you know, and, so uh so i did finally get up around because i'm used to get up at four o'clock in the morning so uh around eight or nine i guess i woke up i'm still i should have been maybe driving i don't know because i from the night before so there was a note where my where my cigarettes uh where my cigarettes were or I had, that's when i was smoking there was cigarettes and the uh uh, uh yeah the cigarettes and my lighter so there was a letter there and the letter said, it was a good visit. Nice meeting you. If you're hungry and lean is not up, go help yourself into the kitchen and make yourself some bacon and eggs if you want. Just help yourself and and we'll be seeing you soon. Wow. <laughs> what an audition, eh? Yeah. <laughs> For a first the, audition. The only thing I, I played was like he had two, two couple of guitars out and we, we uh, had a little jam session. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's weird too that after a night of drinking and partying, he went out of his way to say, "Make sure you get some breakfast." Like that's kind of fun, you know. That I think that says a lot about him too. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he yeah. Said, he said, "If the wife's not up, help yourself," you know. <laughs> but if the wife's up, get her to make you breakfast. Was that the idea? Well, I guess because you know, Lelene is a real nice person. Like she, she makes snacks for us and stuff. There's always you'd never go hungry, you know, at the place. And yeah. some, he probably he probably thinks that if Lena was up, she'd probably cook me a egg sandwich or something <laughs> yeah no that's great you told me another story this this is just talking as long as we're talking about food um when you were on tour in like 2010 and tom was in a bad mood one day and you went and boiled him a wiener or something well Do you remember I, we're on the uh, we're on the 2010 tour yeah let me get my i get my references here because i oh, i'm bad at uh, names and or times and everything i just want to say uh, ray legere is watching us tonight and he just wrote cool stories do you know ray legere he's also an incredible I do, yeah I, I thought you probably did i don't think i know ray worked with rita mcneil i don't think he ever worked with stomp and tom but no, he's he, an no he, he hasn't worked with, i don't think he worked with stomp and tom but i played some music with him and he's probably canada's one of canada's one of the best fiddle players in canada you know, he is he is for sure. And he's based in Sackville just a few minutes from me. And we were going to be working on a show, a Christmas carol that got canceled because of COVID. Anyway, I just saw he's watching. I thought there's another. Well, I, I thought you might have crossed paths with him at some point. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so in 2010, okay. I, I love that story about he was in a bad mood and what you did to cheer him up. <laughs> okay. Well, what we did was we played uh, uh, Vernon, B.C. Uh, yeah, Vernon, B.C. On August, on an, on the tail end of our tour, and so we had to drive to to uh, Dawson Creek, and so uh, first, and that's like 325 miles. Oh, okay, to, uh, Dawson Creek from Vernon. So uh, we stopped in uh, uh, Quinell. Okay, I know Quinell. Yeah, I've heard Quinell. of Quinell. And and there was that's when all the big fires were going on. There was. Uh, 
it, you could see the smoke in the air and stuff. It, matter of fact, if we probably we were wondering if we we're even gonna get through if if it got worse, you know. Yeah. But, uh, Tom wasn't in the best mood. I, I I noticed he wasn't in the best mood, and I thought, I wonder how I can do fix this. So I went to the I went to the uh, the front office, and I said, "Have you got a kitchenette here?" Yeah, I do. Do you mind if I borrowed it for about an hour or so? I said, "That won't make a, ma a mess. I'll clean up whatever I got to do." And she said, that, that he said, "What do you want to do?" I said, "I want to boil some wieners." <laughs> uh, really? Yeah. So I go down, and I went down to um, the grocery store. And I bought two packages of Schneider's wieners, not Red Hots. These were actually called wieners. They weren't the Red Hots because Tom's, is, his favorite was Red Hots. He loved the Red Hots. Okay. So they didn't have any Red Hots, but they had the wieners. So uh, I got some, some wieners and uh, I went back to the room and I, and I boiled them up. And I, and I well, you didn't have to knock and his room was either open or, you know, part open because we were always in and out of his room all the time. Yeah, but the door was uh, uh, shut, so I just kind of tapped on it, and here comes one of the guys in the band in there, and I come in with this boiled, this boiled wieners. He says, "What do you got there?" I said, "Well, I got a couple of dozen boiled wieners here." He had a, he a, a, the the look on his face was priceless. First thing he said was, "Tommy, go get the mustard, <laughs> <laughs> mustard and, uh, and mustard and uh, bread, white bread, right?" Yeah. And, Love them. Uh, like he'll eat like cold wieners. He dip them in the mustard or uh, mustard jar and and eat them like that. You know, like <laughs> wow. <laughs> you said it totally changed his mood. He got so like you said it was like you gave him a million dollars. You told me. Yep. <laughs> totally changed his mood and and then uh, and uh, we we carried on and headed up to uh, uh, to uh, Dawson Creek and then then we played Dawson Creek then. Uh, Edmonton and then Fort McMurray. Wow. So that was 2010. And then you did his last tour with him in 2011 as well, right? Yeah. yeah. I actually, I think I, I have a picture of that band. I think it's the last, I think it's called, you posted it on uh, Facebook and said it called it the last band. So yeah. who are the people in that picture? Well, no, this is not the last band. Oh, it's not. Okay. Sorry. Last, this is a picture of the last concert, which in 2010 was at uh, Fort McMurray, Alberta. Oh, okay, because I yeah, your last one was 2011. Sorry, yeah, so this is 2010. That's Tim Huss on the on the right, or oh, okay, you know, on the right, and then uh, I can't remember Rick's name, but we called him Rick the Stick because he was quite a croquet player. Oh, okay, he was a good croquet croquet player. You said he was quite a croquet. Player. Okay, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then, of course, Billy and, and myself, and or Tim Hadley, and then myself, then uh, Billy uh, McGinnis. Oh, okay, cool. And that, so was that, the last, that was the last show of the last tour of 2010. Okay, and then you did one, the last time he toured was 2011. Were you with him on that tour as well? Yes, I was. And the last picture of that one was, if you can see that. I oh, there it is above your head, yeah. That's the, la that's the last picture. Okay. That's the picture that uh, um, the Connors family sent us after the memorial. Oh, nice! And it was quite a it was quite a shock because uh, it came in the package, and uh, that's that picture, you know, a nice nice thank you letter and everything, and and the shirt or that the those shirts that we were wearing, we used to wear them on stage, the backup band. Yeah. And uh, the picture was wrapped in one of them shirts because we always had to give the shirts back at the end of the tour. Oh, nice. So it was wrapped in our band, our old band shirts, which I still wow. have. Oh, that's great. Well, yeah, I noticed uh, you and I were talking about it before we went live. You, you've got a lot of Stomp and Tom records and stuff behind you. There's some cool memorabilia there. Um, Al, would you like to play some music for us? Sure. Why don't we do that? So okay. what do you, whatever you, I, I just, we're, we're very lucky we get to hear you play. So you're going to do a Tom song. Is that right? Well, I, I better, or I'm going to get the devil from someone. <laughs> you're probably right and, and congratulations of course on your book but i also want to set uh you know a little plug for brian edwards and brian edwards was uh tom's promoter and tour guy with tom and rita mcneil and his book has just been released and i'm 
I got one on order. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. You know what's funny? I haven't announced this yet, but he's my guest next week. So oh. I'm ex- <laughs> so that's funny. So I'll talk about him more at the end of the show. But yeah, I'm excited about that book as well. I've been talking to Brian about it for a little while, but uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if he's watching tonight. But I think I believe he's my guest for next week. Anyway, I'm going to go off screen and let you sing a little song here. Okay. Okay. It's all up to you, Al. I was young, I do recall, we would go to school in the early fall, but on the days that there was no school, we'd learn to play by a different rule. Get out of that bed, you sleepy head, my hockey mom would say, grab your skates and don't be late. There's a hobby game today. And poor old dad was feeling sad because he couldn't come. He had to go to work and so I got my orders from my hockey mom. My hockey mom. She was my chum. My hockey mom. Then we'd go to the rink in town, and I'd hit that ice, I'd fall down. Then I'd score for the other team, and you could hear my mom stand up and scream. Get off of that ice, I told you twice, and skate the other way. And every year she bent my ear until I learned to play. And when my stick got pretty quick, who the fuck would we become? Each time I score, I knew for sure where the loudest cheers were from. I hockey mom, I hockey mom, my day will come. I hockey mom. Then one day, a stranger came from far away, and he took my name. Pretty soon, for the NHL, I came to play in my game. Get on that fucking stir things up. Show some winning pride, and every time she said that line, I make that fucking side. And there's my dad, old oh, Mister Glad. He knew this night would come. We were all lined up for the Stanley Cup, and the tears were flowing from my hockey mom. My hockey mom, ain't she a bum? My hockey. Forever young, I hope. That's great. Thank you. Uh, that's a lesser known hockey song. Everybody knows the hockey song, but I don't think hockey mom, the, my hockey mom is quite as widely known, but it's a catchy little song. Well, Tom recorded it in uh, 2000 and, uh Five, yeah, and then, but he didn't like the recording, and we re-recorded it in two thousand and eight. Oh, okay. So I was going to ask you. So what? What's um, what albums you played on? So you you did a re-recording of that. You told me earlier, and I didn't know this. His Christmas album, which came out in the early seventies, there was a song on that he wanted re-recorded as well. Is that right? Yes, uh, on the new well, on the new repackaged uh, uh, album. Uh, they they put the the hockey song and hockey mom and and a bunch of, and then all, and then of course all the the ones from the first album and he he always wanted to re really re record the story of Jesus. Okay. So that that version of the story of Jesus is us playing uh, on the new on the new uh, package from Universal. So if you pick up the latest version of the Christmas album, you're on there on the Jesus story. I'm just on one song. Well, no, on one song. A couple of tunes. I'm on that and. Hockey Mom, and 
I, I think uh, yeah, the hockey the hockey song is that on there. Okay. Um, just so you know, Mike Dunlop, Dunlop, I don't know if you know Mike, he yeah. did a lot of the graphic design for Tom. He's watching and he said, well done. <laughs> he said, well done, Al. Sounded great. And Craig and Carol are giving you applause and saying awesome. Anyway, great. So great job on the song. Thank you. It was fun to hear that. Um, actually, okay, before we talk about the albums you were on, I've, I have a couple other pictures. And since we just talked about hockey, that's a great picture. <laughs> now, that... That was at the NHL Hockey Awards in 2008. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Did, now, was it you that told me he called you guys and asked you to go to his house so you could rehearse? And oh, yeah. then, but then when you got there, um, you, he didn't really need he didn't really need to rehearse. He just wanted you guys to hang out with him. Is that or was that you that told me that story? Well, yeah. Um, I'm, I got <laughs> well for one thing. He called me. He says, "I got a gig, but I can't tell you where it is. It's a big gig." <laughs> oh. Okay, can you do it? He told me the day, what day it was. Yeah, I can do that, no problem. So he's getting the band all lined up. So it's so a uh, secret. Okay. Yeah, it's a secret. It's a secret. Matter of fact, he didn't tell me till two days before the oh. game. And, he, and I said, well, can I tell my friends? Because this is like, this is huge. Yeah, you can <laughs> tell your friends now. It's okay. You're all, everything's signed. So, uh, <laughs> um, uh, so I go into work. Before I went to the rehearsal, I go into work and I, they start talking about the hockey awards uh, show. And and, and I, so I went by one of the guys in the driver's room. I said, "Yeah, I'll say hello to Wayne for you." And when I, Wayne Gretzky when I'm there because he's a big Wayne Gretzky fan. Yeah. What you're gonna see? I said, "Yeah, yeah, sure you are." I said, "Tune into CBC eight o'clock." <laughs> 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 so uh, so we went out to Tom's place and. Uh, course the the gang was there you know the band and and uh of course we all traveled together and drank beer and stuff and we just partied and and uh told uh, jokes like tom could tell jokes like for hours just hours and hours and yeah. funny jokes too right? <laughs> well, yeah he'd go on so uh um so we get there we ran uh he ran we ran the hockey song oh maybe twice Maybe three times. Okay, that's enough, boys. To the bar. <laughs> and, that was, and, that, and that was it. <laughs> yeah. And he wasn't one for rehearsing anyway, right? Like, so for him to rehearse was unusual in the first place. Is that right? Well, well, no. We we always had a uh, we we had a certain way. This is the chord I'm in. He said I might speed speed up every once in a while. I might slow down. But he said, it just depends how I feel the crowd out. I might speed it up or I might slow it down. It just depends on, so we always had to, you always had to be on your toes. Okay. Yeah. I remember, I think it was Duncan Fremlin, Fremlin said to me, the band had to follow Tom very, he didn't play with a band so much as the band followed Tom. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, he, I, anyway, he, sorry. He said, I, he said, I can do this show by myself. I don't need you guys. You know, you, 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 you're just part of the, you're part of the band and, and uh, he doesn't even hear us. You know, he's got his monitors out front. He yeah. does his thing, eh? Wow, that's very cool. Yeah, you have other people, Wayne Johnson and Carl Nagsom, saying, "Good oh, job, yes. Al. Great Carl, job." Here, Wayne, I used to bus, I used to uh, drive bus with. Oh, Wayne. Oh, okay, well there you go. And my aunt Carol's saying, "Great show." I a very she loves my guest. There you go. Oh. Um, I was just thinking, Al. What a, again? Talking about Canadian moments, being at the NHL Awards with oh, the yeah. Stanley Cup. Singing the hockey song with Stomp and Tom and Wayne Gretzky in the room. You don't get much more Canadian than that, well, do you? Well, Wayne wasn't there, though. I, oh, I, he wasn't there. Okay. I was just teasing the other drivers, right? Oh, okay. Okay. Anyways, so that, so they, you want to hear the rest of that story of the. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. So, I thought that was the end of it. Oh, no. Hell no. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it was uh, the 2008 uh, NHL Hockey Awards in downtown Toronto at the Princess Market Theater. I think it was. It's cost a big, a big uh, hospital right next door. Okay, I, I don't know Toronto as well as I used to. I lived there oh. 20, 30 years ago, but uh, let me think. I, I don't know if the Phantom of the Opera was there. I don't know if that's the place where they had it. But oh, okay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful theater. So, uh, um, uh, in the morning, CBC came and picked us up in a van. So the the, the band. So yeah. into Toronto we go. And we go get our credentials and we have credentials. We got our name tags and everything. And that, uh, 
that gets us anywhere in that building, all past where had we're all through security and everything, right to the backstage, to we're in the room where all the awards were and everything. Oh wow, okay. It was quite a deal, eh? And uh Cassie Campbell was there and I I, I said, Cassie, hi Cassie, and and uh I drove the the women's Olympic team, uh, hockey team around when they were in Kitchener competing. Oh, okay. So and uh I said, you probably wouldn't remember me, but she said, I was the bus driver that drove you guys gals around there that whole week. Yeah, I remember you, you know. <laughs> so, uh, she said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm playing with Stomp and Tom. Oh, that's cool. So, uh, so we, this is what happens. They have a, a, a fifth wheel trailer out behind the theater for us. Yeah. And it had, of course, beer. And so, <laughs> so then this uh, lady comes in and she says, uh, I'm, I'm your, I'm your, uh, uh, you might as well say golfer, but I'm your person who, who, uh, who does, you know, who's looking after you. Oh, that's cool. So, uh, just a minute here. I got that thing right here. Oh, that's your pass. Oh, here, I'll make you, I'm sorry. I should have made you bigger. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, Tim Hadley says, uh, maybe I'll have a coffee, uh, cream, a little bit of sugar. <laughs> it seemed like five minutes she was back with this coffee. And I said, geez, uh, really? Maybe I'll have one too. Same deal. Big. Come yeah. Back. So uh, she says, if you guys are hungry, just go inside because they're having, you know, food for the whole crew, you know, the, the CBC production crew and, and everybody. So uh, we go in. Yeah, they had this food uh, uh, buffet so we we're all eating the buffet and, and i'm not talking wieners and beans i'm talking some some, <laughs> you know, some pretty good stuff not tom food <laughs> no so uh um we go then we go back to the we go back to the trailer to wait wait for tom meanwhile we've already set our stuff up we ca we kind of had a sound check for our own personal stuff yeah so uh uh <laughs> so uh we're we're sitting in here here comes tom they bring him in a limo, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with the guitar, with the mic, his own mic stand, because you know he's particular with mic stand and his, his guitar. Oh, okay. So into the into the they he comes into the trailer. They take the stuff in. Young Tom takes the stuff into the uh, the arena or the theater. So they were sitting around, and uh, all of a sudden, this gal comes in and she said, "I'm she's I I got five pizzas coming for you guys." What fight? Well, we're not even really hungry, but they had, they had brought a bunch of these pizzas, and so. Uh, but but we're start by this time we're starting to run low on beer because he only brought one case, right? One case. Yeah. I can't remember. We're running low on beer, but he said, "Well, we would like a case of beer." Sure enough, it wasn't very long, and here's this guy in a tux with a case. That <laughs> <laughs> was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So here's another case of beer, and so we're in there, and the next thing you know, we're we're doing the sound check. So we're doing the sound check and Tom always kind of <clears throat> does that every once in a while. Well, this time he did it. And I thought there was about five or six people sitting to watch the sound check. And they all jumped out of their seats, scared the hell out of them. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so then uh, the, produ the, produ the producer comes up. He says to Tom, well, Tom, what I want you to do is uh, we're going to sing your song and you're all going to plug your guitars off and walk stage off stage. Yeah. Tom says, no, no, that ain't going to happen. He says, I want to be on the stage when the cup comes out. Well, well I'm going to go have to see what I can do about that. So he takes off, comes back about, I don't know, 10 minutes later. He says, okay, Mr. Connors, no problem. Well, you can be on stage when the, when the cup comes out. Okay. So that, that's looked after. So now we're back to the, now we're going back to the, to the trailer and have a couple of more beers, right? Yeah. And, uh, and they wanted to put the makeup on Tom. We didn't get the makeup, I don't think. I can't remember. I don't think so. Tom got the makeup, though. Yeah. Because, of course, he's the star. So yeah. uh, anyways, so we, we go back in, and uh, we, we do our song. And, uh, and then so we're hanging around watching what's going on. And then some of us took our stuff back to the trailer. So uh, uh, we're watching some of the awards show and, and everything. And then, so... All of a sudden, uh, Big Frank comes back. Come on, Tom wants you to come back inside. He wants to get some pictures with the cup. 
Oh, okay. okay. So this is where the picture of the cup comes in. So we're standing there, and so he hands me his guitar, right? Oh, okay, yeah. He's Now he has a Stan, Stanley Cup, right? Oh, okay, yeah. And he, I got his guitar, and someone... You can see it in the picture, yeah. Someone gave him a a, um, 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 a uh, bottle of water, and he hate he he, he he never seen him with a bottle of water in his hand ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he's got it open. He wants to pour it in the cup. <laughs> and he's no, Mister Connors, you can't drink out of the cup. He says, "What do you mean? They pull it out of the Rideau Canal?" <laughs> <laughs> so I got a real jolt out of that. So, uh, so we end of the show. Time for the CBC to take us back. So this is so funny. There was about I don't know, maybe six beers left in a in a case in the in the in the trailer. So the limousine trunks open, in with the guitar, then the music stand, then the six bottles of beer in the, the, the case that was left over. <laughs> Down the, they're gone. Right? <laughs> So he wasn't leaving any beer behind. <laughs> so we get back to Tom's place, and uh, there's a limousine driver in having drinks with Tom. <laughs> Real? Oh, really? That's yeah. Hilarious. He says, he says, he, he had a he had a couple, I guess. He says, I got to get the hell out of here. I got to pick up in in Brampton. He said. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom could talk anybody into having a beer with him, basically. <laughs> More or less, yeah. Yeah, that's very funny. Um, there's uh, so many stories. We're, I'm supposed to try to keep the show between 45 minutes and an hour, and we're at 47 already. What? But there's at least I know it's, the time's flying, Al, and I, I have at least a couple more stories. I like there's this picture I wanted to show too, which yep. is you and Tom with Big Joe Muffera. Big Joe Muffera. Yeah. Uh, every time we we get near or we we uh, the tours, we're either going to go through North uh, Bay coming from the south or we're going to come from the east uh, through North Bay. And every time we'd stop there, we'd get pictures. Really? Oh, so he'd go see Big Joe every time? Every time. Oh, that's great. So that's Tom with the hat on. You can't see his face so well. And that's you in the shorts there. Yes. Um, that's great. Now, one of the things I, that one of the stories you told me that I really liked was um, – you know, when you're writing a biography of people, you try to show them warts and all the good and the bad. And Tom, I, I I got the feeling from stories I heard that he could be a little bit cranky and argumentative and always thought he was right and stuff. And you were one of the only people that was willing to actually tell me a story about that when you told me the guitar story oh, about you. Oh, that was, <laughs> that, was a, that was a soft spot with, with, with him, you know, and, and we argued, we argued constantly. On so that Tom day. had this old Gibson guitar that he had for a hundred years, and well, not really, but he had it for a long time, right? Yeah, he bought and it his, in Nashville at a at a uh, uh, pawn. Now, the furniture used to be, or it was a furniture store, and he said he found it up all covered with dust and and a big rack or somewhere. They didn't even have enough money to get string. No, they had just enough money to get together to put uh, him and Stevedore to put some strings on it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And and so you guys would argue because well, tell, tell people the story of what you'd argue about. <laughs> well, we'd argue because he thought it was like made in like 1901 or or something. I said, no, Tom, no, 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 that's a J45 from the 40s. Well, how do you know that? I said, well, it was a J45 made in the 40s with the with the with the uh, uh, um, they called it the the logo the logo different logo on there the banner they called it the banner logo. Oh, okay, it was a yeah. great guitar. Yeah, um, a friend of mine actually refinished that guitar. Lena snuck it out to Lynn Russworm, and Lynn Russworm took it over to Johnny Dare's place to have it have it refinished. And I guess she got the devil on that one. <laughs> oh, really? For getting it fixed up? Yeah, to get it refinished. Oh, okay. But yeah, it was you a great, a great guitar. When I first played that guitar, I went, "Oh my God, this is a beautiful guitar." And I said, "You know, you should you should maybe try some some." Put a new set of strings on it. Well, what kind of strings did you do you like, Al? And I said, Well, I like elixir strings, and uh, I've been using them for years. And I put them on, I put them on, uh, on there. And he says, You know what, Al? I think I've fallen in love with this guitar all over again. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, I remember you saying though that you guys would argue for hours about that guitar and when it was made. And you said <laughs> he liked to argue and he was never wrong. <laughs> oh, oh, if you want to, if you're looking for an argument. You'd find one, and and uh, you know, 
<laughs> That's funny. It has passed the time by. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, I just want to tell you because you probably can't see the comments. Uh, it looks like a bunch of your friends are watching. Marlene McCracken says hi, Al. Oh, hi, Marlene. And Cam Ed. What's that? It was a bus driver too. Oh, okay. And Cam Edgar says, "Evening, Al. Your beard is looking good." From the the, the mayor of uh, Roxeter. Oh, wow. Okay. And Brian Moon says, hey, Al, miss you, brother. It's time for Pete's Smoked Meat. Yes, sir. He brings <laughs> smoked meat. He's a great musician, singer, a bass okay. player. He's up around uh, the Brockville or the Montreal area. Oh, okay. And a man named John Lawrence had great stories and lots of great memories for you. I don't know John if you know Lawrence, John. Fellow bus driver. Okay. And Alan Dalton said it was nice to, nice to meet Al in Elmira at the guitar show. I don't know yes. if you remember. Yes. Yeah. So some thought I met him down at the guitar show. He, uh, yeah, Avery actually, he said, here we get down to Mississauga. He says, uh, I can get you in some games. You know? I said, cool. Oh, wow. Great. So now I want to give away two books real quickly. So if people get ready to type, I'm going to ask two questions. Whoever okay. gives me the right answer to either of them, just type in the answer. And Al has actually given you the answer to one of them during while he was talking tonight. He answered one of these questions. But oh. anyway, so one is... And the first person to type it, I, I, uh, I'll I record your name and then I'll get in touch with you tomorrow. I'll send you a message and we'll arrange to get a book to you. But what was Tom's wife's name? And Al has, Al has mentioned her a couple times tonight. So what was Tom's wife's name is one question. And the second one, we're going to give away two copies of the book. Um, that's this book here, my book, Stompin' Tom, The Myth and the Man. Um, to, Tom wrote uh, the theme song for TV show. Um, the song was called The Consumer, and it was a theme song for what show? Oh, there we go. We have an answer. Liz Lapsey said Lena, and she is right. That is Tom's wife's name. But what show was The Consumer the theme song for? Uh, it was Tom was asked to write the theme song for a Canadian television show, and he wrote the song called The Consumer for what show? If you know what that is, you get, you get a copy of the book. So, Al, did you... Oh. Linda Sanders Levert has it already. It was Marketplace. She is right. There you, there yeah. you go. Did you ever perform that song with them? I'm sure you did. No, we ne we never did the consumer. Uh, oh, really? Okay. There were certain tunes that, that I really wanted. I finally the last tour, I bugged him and bugged them and bugged uh, to do, and he finally did it. And that was uh, I've been all across this country from the east coast to the west, and I've been asked about a thousand times. But oh, yeah. My stomping grounds. Stomping grounds. And I bugged him and bugged him and bugged him to, to do it. And I think it's I think he did it because I said, you know, that's my wife's favorite uh, song that you do. Oh, is that right? Sue. I said, yeah. The Cabbage Roll Queen. He called her the Cabbage Roll Queen <laughs> uh, because she made these great. That's another story in Edmonton in 2006. Um, we were playing in Edmonton in 2006. And... Uh, Brian Edwards, uh, uh, bless his heart. He was the, you know, he made things happen. Yeah. I got just, just so people know, I, unfortunately I have the winners. Liz Lapsey said Lena and Linda Sanders Levert said marketplace. Anyway, people just keep typing. So just so they know I gave the books away, but okay. So Brian Edwards, you're on I, tour. I can say one of them. I can say one of them books is coming to Ontario because I know Liz. Hi Liz. <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, was it a cabbage roll story? Oh yeah. So we're in Edmonton, and uh, he there was a German restaurant they used to like to go to. So he booked they booked the the German restaurant like closed this restaurant restaurant down just for us to go in and eat. Oh wow. Okay. So I had uh, pork cock or something like that, but Tom wanted cabbage rolls, and so and, and he's eating the cabbage rolls, and he's kind of you know got a funny look in his face, you know. And so I asked him later, I said, "How do you like the cabbage rolls?" Too much rice, <laughs> not enough meat. <laughs> I said, "Well, when we get home, I said I'll get us. We're playing at Kitchener. I'll get my wife to make us some some cabbage rolls." Okay, so we played Kitchener. My that's where I was living at the time, and uh, I was driving bus. I drove bus there for quite quite a few years. We were playing in Bigman's. We we're playing in Bigman's uh, uh, Hall, and uh, so Sue she made up uh, cabbage rolls and deviled eggs. So it was all it, it was all secret. I mean, you know, it wasn't. You can't have people come in. You know, this time they did it. It was okay. So uh, the the cabbage rolls brought him in, and Tom and Tom Junior said these got to be some of the best cabbage rolls we've ever had. They came to your house. Is that what you said? No, no. They Sue brought oh, them to the motel. Oh, okay. But it was a secret because just because yeah. you didn't want. It. 
Oh, okay. Cloak and dagger. He couldn't tell anybody where you know where she's going or what where she's going with her with and all this. I said, don't tell oh, anybody. You know, and that's right. He kept it a secret when he which motels he was at and stuff. Right? Yeah. 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 I forgot about that. That's funny. So they they were the best egg roll or cabbage rolls they'd ever had. Oh, they were so happy and <laughs> and uh, so and, and he said, I'd like to thank your wife for that. And I said, Well, here's the cell phone. Here you go. Yeah. So uh, she answers the phone and. This is stopping Tom. I, I guess the look in her face was just like priceless, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it. So anyways, uh, Tom got spoiled because she wouldn't make cabbage rolls for me. But <laughs> Tom and we'd go out to visit, and she'd take cabbage rolls, you know. And so the, uh, the tour or the uh, wrap up tour in two thousand six, she made some. So we go in the kitchen, right? And uh, Tom, Tom says, Alina, Alina. Put them, put them away somewhere so I can have them after, right? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, so now, Al, I wanted to just, if people want to hear you on Stomp and Tom records, which records did you play on? Because we I meant I started that a while ago and I forgot to wrap it up. I'm, I'm playing on uh, the uh, uh, Ballad of Stomp and Tom yeah. and the Rose of Life. So his last two last full... Two full length because he did some like traditional he recorded a couple hundred songs before he passed away just him and guitar but those were his last two release like yes. full length releases we got off tour he started working on them on them songs and then again you know I, i'd go out he'd give me a call and have a listen to it you know because he liked to know he liked to get feedback from people on his recordings and i sat out there and it, yeah, that's pretty good i mean because he could pick guitar too which a lot of people didn't know but he could he could pick guitar yeah, I remember you saying he was a much better guitar player than people realized. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So now we're almost at an hour. So there is one last thing I want to ask you about, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, one, one of the more moving stories in the book was the last time you went to see him because you didn't quite realize he was sick. You went on his birthday and that was sort of when you realized how sick he was, wasn't it? Well, no. Just a month. He was sick way before that. Oh, you did. Okay. So it was about a month before he passed away. Yeah. Susan didn't know how, how bad he was until we went out. For th at Thanksgiving, and we were heading out to friends of, of theirs, and and that I met through Tom, and that was uh, Sam Leach, and he uh, played fiddle for Tom, and we were heading there. He had a, every year he used to have a, uh, a, a he'd have a, a get together, a jam at his house when the Aaron Fair was on, and it was always on uh, the long weekend. So uh, Sue and I went out uh, Thanksgiving, and uh, that's when we hit this motor home, and I said, this this we're going to take on the road, right, Tom? You know, I don't think I'll be going on the road, you know, not any time soon. But uh, so he said, we'll see you at Christmas time, right? And I said, yeah, we'll come out. Uh, we've been out the last couple of Christmas before that. And so we were out there at Christmas time and he wasn't, you know, he he, he wasn't really the, the best. And, and, of course, I've been around a lot of people that have, that have been sick and stuff. And so uh, he said, I'll see you at my birthday. Okay, so uh, the birthday came, and uh, Lena called. I said, you still coming out? Are you coming out for Tom's birthday? I said, by all means. So it, it was a Saturday on his birthday in, in 2013. Was his was a Saturday was his birthday. So we, we went out, or that afternoon, I had a gig with Lynn Russworth. So I took my handy dandy Stomp and Tom songbook and I sang Stomp and Tom songs most of the afternoon. You know, I, oh, nice. I says, you you won't believe, folks, but I'm going to Stomp and Tom's birthday house tonight for his birthday, and I'm going to do the same damn thing. Eat your hearts out, you know. Yeah, uh, you know, a true Canadian. So uh, that was that was his, uh, he was sitting by his pool table and sang a couple of songs and you know just reminiscing and and. Uh, so he, so it was like four o'clock in the morning, and uh, it was getting late, and and I knew Ta was coming the next day. He told me since his son was coming, Ta was coming. So I thought, well, we better go, Tom. What do you mean you're going? You know, so you know that's the way he is. What are you, a wussy or something? You know, and <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, he didn't want you to leave even that night when he was sick. I remember you exactly. saying that, and so, he, he you know, sorry. So he said, yeah, okay, you know, and so. I was. I went out first. Got my, uh, got my, uh, my boots on, and uh, I seen uh, she gave Tom or Sue giving Tom a hug, and she whispered. He whispered something in her ear, and uh, 
So I got my boots on. I said, we'll see you later. And we went up to the car. And uh, that's when I, 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 Sue said to me, he said, uh, you wouldn't believe. I said, I, first of all, we both said to each other, I think this is probably the last time we're going to see Stomp the Dog alive. Right. And uh, so uh, my, I, my wife said, I said, I said, well, she said, you know what he told me? And I said, I don't know. He said, thanks for coming out. And it's been good to know you. Oh, you know, wow. so that's so he, he knew. knew he was saying goodbye. Yeah. 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 So that, yeah. And then he passed away just a little over a month later. I think it would have been oh, it wasn't so. even a month later. It was only a few. Oh, it was March. I can't remember the exact date. Yeah. Okay. So just a few weeks. Yeah. yeah, yeah month, uh, it could be about a month, not quite a month. Yeah. You, anyway, you have, uh, I, you gave me some great stories, Al, which are, you know, not to push the book, but they're, they're in there. There's another one I told in another, so I won't go into it now, but you talked about every night when he played the battle of stomp and Tom, how he'd get a standing ovation. And I did talk about that with Dave Gunning or somebody in one of the previous three interviews, I read uh -huh. your chunk from the book where you talked about how amazing it was, no matter where you were, he'd slow down and sit on the stool and the audience and sing that song and he'd get a standing ovation every night. Well, what he did was he, in those last couple of tours, he brought, he brought the, the stool out and he, yeah. uh, he wanted to make it like, a, like he wanted to be like, if you're in his living room, he wanted to make it uh, real personal. And so he's saying some of the old songs he used to sing that the old, he said, I like to do some songs that some of the older people might remember. And he'd do Nova Scotia home and he'd do, a couple of tunes like that, and then he'd do the ballad. And he that song, he always had a hard time getting through without shedding a couple of tears. He got very emotional on that song every wow. time he sang it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and then when he finished, as soon as he did that song, finished, bang, it was always a standing ovation. Wow. It's funny because that song's a lot, it talks a lot about his mom. And one of the things I talk about in the book is I think that, you know, him being taken away from his mom played a big role in so many, so much of his life. Like, every, you know, his whole life, it was kind of, I, I don't know if he ever quite recovered from getting taken away and put in a foster home and, well, or an he orphanage. About that. And he's, he said, you know, like, it's not even like when she was my mother because I didn't know her. You know? Yeah, I know he spent years looking for her, and then when he finally met her, there was no connection anymore. And yeah, anyway, it's a very sad story. Um, the uh, what was I going to say? There was one other thing. Oh, when the, when you saw him that last time, and you knew he was sick, I remember you telling me too that they were such a private family. You wanted to tell the other band members, but you didn't think you could, right? Well, I wanted to call Billy, and I wanted to call Tim, and and Mark Laform, and the whole works of them, and I wanted to to uh, to tell them, but I but. I know how the, the, the Connors were. They're very private people. And if they would have knew I was calling people to say, you know, that he was not well, I would get, you know, I'd get a backlash. So I just, I didn't do nothing. I just said, yeah. you know, if they don't, if they're not going to pick the phone up and talk to them, I'm not going to put the yeah. bug in the ear and, and get trouble over it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I mean, it's, it's cool that you were there at the end and I, I appreciate you, uh, knowing you know how private they were sharing stories with us tonight it's one it's great to hear all these stories i think people love getting to know a little bit more about because so many people have said the stomp and tom you saw on stage was very much a character and tom connor's the man was a lot more complicated and intelligent than you would guess oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so so i i appreciate you sharing some stories with us so i unless you were were you just going to do the one song if you prepared another song i would let you do it i didn't mean to cut you off but well, did you okay. I'll do one that uh, I've been here. Why don't we'll go out with a song? I'll let you do this one last song, and I forgot to ask before we started how many you were going to do. But if you have another one ready, let's do that, and we'll and we'll wrap it up. It's been a lovely chatting with you, Al. Well, for sure. Uh, when when I went uh, when I let's see. Uh, when I when I went to play with Stomp and Tom, I opened up the shows, and it was it was uh, half the. Excuse me for a minute. I got to get a capo, okay? Oh, okay, sure. Um, so, yeah, while Al is gone, he's gone to get a capo. Um, there's, oh, there's all kind. Of, there's so many stories I could tell you that, uh, here, I'll just go to my screen. Um, there were a number of things I wanted to talk to Al about that we, we ran out of time. Um, I always think I'm going to try to keep this to 45 minutes, and we always go to a full hour. Um, anyway, oh, he's back. So here we go. So when, when I went out to... Uh, I had to learn songs. I had to learn uh, Canadian songs. I had to, you know, of course, they had to be all Canadian. And I had to learn a bunch of Tom songs. So yeah. I found this one song, and 
I and I had to sit in his kitchen and sing it to him. When I told oh. him, I said, I did a little different differently. He says, "You what with my song?" I said, <laughs> I'm doing it a little different than you did. And uh, all I did was slow it down. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> And okay, I'll let you do it. Deep down inside of me, the only dream I see is when you came to me to be my own. And when you said to me, this dream could never be, in all my memories, I'll dream alone. And in my picture book, I often take a look and see the one I love, the one I'm dreaming of. And though you can't be mine All through the years and time I'll take this dream of mine And I'll dream alone I've lost you there. Uh, yeah, I muted myself while you were singing. I went, muted myself. <laughs> Sorry, I just said that's a very old-fashioned country song. It's great. Yeah. Nice. It's nice. It feels like you know Hank Snow or those guys. Anyway, that's great. Great job, Al. Thank you. Thanks for being with me tonight and for doing this and for being part of the book. I really appreciate it. Um, if you can hang on, I'm just going to say goodbye. I, I you wait. I'm going to take you off screen and say goodbye to people. But thanks again so much for doing this. Okay, and I'll just do one more familiar riff that everybody would know. Oh, okay. <laughs> What is that? I know it. What is that? That's Sudbury Saturday Night. Sudbury Saturday Night. There you go. I was. I just couldn't get the words in my head because I was trying not to try to sing. You know. <laughs> there you go. That's great, Al. I could. I could sit and listen to you play your instruments. Like play some dobro, some steel guitar. Play it all night long. Anyway, uh, I really appreciate it. I'm just going to take you off screen and say goodbye to people, and then I'll come right back to chat with you. Sounds Thank good. you. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay, everybody, so thanks for tuning in. Um, as Al mentioned, Brian Edwards was Tom's promoter. He booked a lot his shows for like 20 or 30 years, but he also did the same thing for Rita McNeil. He's worked with Carol Baker. He's worked with Tommy Hunter and Charlie Pride, and he's got a new book out. He runs a company called Rockland's Entertainment, and he's written a book about his 40 years in the music business. And I interviewed him when I wrote my book about Rita McNeil, and I, I didn't interview him for the Tom book because he felt he was too close to the family. He didn't want to share personal stories, but we've remained friends and I talked to Brian a lot and he's going to come on next week and we're going to talk about Tom, but we'll probably also talk about Rita McNeil and Carol Baker and all the rest of them. So I hope you can join us. I'll be back here next Thursday unless Facebook gets rid of me again for some reason. I hope not. I hope they let me stay. Um, I want to say thanks to Live Bait for uh, sponsoring tonight's show. I want to thank to form, my, everyone at Formac Publishing who makes this possible and the folks from Arts Nova Scotia who gave us the grant to do the tour and then let us turn it into an online event. Um, just as I leave here, I'm going to put up a slide that tells you where you can get the book. I know I keep grabbing it, but there you go. If you want to buy a copy of the book, they're actually getting hard to get. Um, at the screen here at the end will say you can get it online from Chapters and Amazon, but they're actually sold out at the moment. I think they're both waiting on more copies. They are in store at Chapters, Coles, and Indigo across the country. As well, it's so important during these COVID times to support local businesses. So if you have a local um, bookstore, like I'm very close to Tidewater Books in Sackville, New Brunswick, I know that 
I think they have a couple copies, but I know that if you call a store like that, they'll order copies in for you, or you can get them direct from my publisher, Formac uh, Publishing. It's it's going to show up on the final screen here. So, or you can get it from the library. You don't even have to buy it. I'm not just pushing that you buy my book. Just read it if you want to know more about Tom. Thanks for tuning in. I'm glad to be back, and I look forward to seeing y'all again next week. So, have a great night, everybody. Thanks for watching.